Gumbo and jambalaya are very famous dishes that are also very fun to say, yet many people outside the American South often confuse the two which is why we're here. Welcome to Battle of the Bites, where we cook two related or often compared foods from scratch, then compare them at the end to see which one reigns supreme. Yes, it's true, gumbo and jambalaya are both two completely unique and different dishes. I'm sure to some of you, and Nola natives, I'm looking at you, it probably seems blasphemous to compare the two dishes head to head. But let this episode be less of a battle for supremacy and more for expanding one's culinary repertoire. So Cajun and Creole are two completely different things, and we're, we're not gonna get into crazy detail because this video would quickly turn into a feature length documentary. However, according to the legendary Cajun chef Paul Prudhomme, Cajun food is country food that was brought about by displaced Nova Scotians who migrated to the Louisiana area a very long time ago. Where Creole food is city food that's been influenced by one of the many countries that held power in New Orleans at one point or another throughout history. Let's start by making the Cajun Creole Spice Blend for both dishes by mixing garlic and onion powder, dried oregano and thyme, black and white pepper, cayenne and crushed red pepper, and lastly smoked paprika. Cajun spice blends tend to use more peppers, while Creole leans heavy on the herbs, so this is my take on a hybrid blend, hence the name. This right here is an above average andouille sausage. It's just a Cajun smoked sausage. Any smoked sausage is gonna work here. Uh, yeah, let's cut it up. To spread the board and represent both styles of Louisiana cooking, I'm going to make a Cajun style jambalaya and Creole style gumbo, starting with the gumbo. Creole gumbo tends to be a little more flexible in terms of its ingredients. You'll see sausage with seafood, chicken with game meat, there's really no discrimination. The viscosity is a lot thinner than many Cajun gumbos, and it sometimes includes tomatoes, which you don't really see Cajuns use. Brown a pound of andouille sausage over high heat in a cast iron, then take them out and pour in a cup of neutral oil, a high smoke point oil like grapeseed or canola works. When it starts to smoke, add the flour in and immediately start whisking. We're making a roux, specifically a dark roux, and the roux adds a deep toasty flavor and color to the gumbo and it also helps to thicken it. Continuously stir the roux until it turns from blonde to milk chocolate to dark chocolate in color. If the roux goes black, it's burnt, you need to toss it and start over. You can do this over low heat if it's your first time, it'll just take a little longer. Once a dark chocolate, add in the diced onion, two diced celery stalks, and diced green bell pepper. This veg flavor base is known as the Holy Trinity in Louisiana cooking. It's sort of similar to the French mirepoix but utilizes is what grows locally in Louisiana. After a few minutes of sweating, kerplunk in the five cloves of minced garlic and one mater, then cook for a minute more before spooning in three tablespoons of the spice blend in the cooked sausage. Once the base is mega schmelly in a good way and chunked out, pour in the eight cups of crab stock followed by the three bay leaves, and now we just gotta bring the whole thing to a simmer, cover it up, and cook off the floury taste for about an hour. After 30 minutes of simmering, we're gonna skim off the excess grease from the pot, which there will be a lot of. Just try to get about 80% of it. It's fine if you leave a tad in, it's flavorful. Just drop the crab clusters, cover it up, and let it simmer for 30 minutes more. After 30 minutes more, drop the shrimp, lump crab meat, and... Can't forget the Worcesterman McDerber McDer sauce, derber. About a tablespoon of that. Let that whole thing ride uncovered for five minutes more, then cut the heat, and now we need to add one more important ingredient. This is called gumbo filet powder. It's basically the dried and pulverized leaves of the sassafras tree. This one has a little bit of thyme in it too. It works as a, as a flavoring agent, but also is a thickener. Another popular thickener is okra, which is often used when it's in season. All right, let's talk rice. On to the jambalaya. For the jambalaya, we got a special ham called tasso, tasso ham. It's a Cajun ham, it's spiced, it's sugared, it's cured, it's smoked, um, it's really flavorful. This is a special ingredient I got from my local butcher, so no shame in the game if you want to leave it out and add some more andouille. Brown a half pound of tasso ham pieces in a girthy pot, then set them aside and do the exact same thing with the one and a half pounds of chicken chunks. I like to chop the meat up into pretty small pieces, but you can leave them into larger chunks if you'd like. Now, I'm going for a Cajun-style jambalaya, which generally does not mix animals from land and sea or use tomato products, so chicken and tasso ham it is. Jambalaya and gumbo start off the exact same way with the same holy trinity and dark roux that we just made, so, you know, for the sake of time, we're just gonna skip to the part where they begin to veer off. After adding the five cloves of minced garlic and three tablespoons of the spice blend, pour in your six cups of chicken stock followed by the three bay leaves, season that with salt to taste, then cover and simmer for an hour over low heat, and also preheat the oven to 375 or 190 Celsius while you're at it. 
After an hour of simmering, dump in all the brown chicken and tasso ham, then sprinkle in the two cups of long grain white rice. Give it all a solid mix, then cover it and bake it in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes, or really until the rice has absorbed all of the liquid and meat juice. After a harder time in the heat dungeon, the jambalaya is ready. Simply spoon it into your favorite bowl and garnish with thinly sliced scallions. As for the gumbo, remember this is Creole style, it's a thinner consistency, so I like to serve this in a shallow bowl with a scoop of fresh long grain white rice and plenty of our crab shrimp and sausage. Okay, we're ready. Who will take the W, the rice or the soup? All right, we have our jambalaya in our gumbo. We are going to commence the battle of the bites. All right, so the first thing, ease of cooking, right? Which dish is easier to cook? And I think the answer for that is, is the gumbo. At first, I thought that the jambalaya was gonna be just because it's a, it's a rice dish. You put it in the oven, forget about it. But the gumbo comes together like a lot faster than the jambalaya, and it's just all in all, there's, you know, you have to make a roux for both. It's just easier. One point to gumbo. All right, the next criteria is time commitment, and I kind of hinted at it, but between the gumbo and the jambalaya, you're gonna have to let both simmer to let that flour cook off, but the gumbo is done once that flour cooks off and once everything's in there, whereas the jambalaya, you have to add the rice, then cook it and bake it in the oven again, adding an extra 40 minutes to the process. So from a time commitment perspective, gumbo takes another point. So two puntos to gumbo already. Third criteria, price. It's kind of a, a silly thing to do right now because technically you could make a chicken gumbo and have it be the exact same cost. And for the sake of the video, we're gonna go with what I bought for the ingredients for each dish. And the gumbo is a lot more expensive. I bought the crab, I went out and I got the shrimp, whereas this one just has some ham and some chicken. This one's got a bunch of Lux seafood in it. So this is more expensive. Jambala wins in terms of price. All right, next up, the taste test, flavor. Which one is more flavorful? All right, I'm gonna start with the, uh, I'm gonna start with the gumbo. This Creole gumbo should be more like a soup. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get just the broth to taste it with some of the crab maybe. Mm. Well, hits you in the face right away, man. That dark roux, like, dark roux is the key to happiness. All right, moving on to the jambala. Look at that. Mm. All right, damn. It's almost a little sweeter because of the tasso ham, right? Which is that spiced ham we're talking about. Definitely spicier. The little scallions are actually super refreshing and nice to eat. The rice is uh, super starchy because we did not rinse it, if you'll recall. You get some of those crispy bits from the bottom. Mmm. All right. I'm not gonna lie, I was going into this expecting this one to win right now, but so far, this is just a lot more smack you in the mouth. This is a lot more interesting, crabby flavor. As far as like intensity goes, I'm gonna have to give it to jambalaya, which brings us to 2-2. Two, two. That brings us to the fifth and final criterion, the X factor, which is going to switch for every episode of Battle of the Bites and every two dishes. In this case, my lovely, lovely girlfriend, Jarb, is going to come and taste both of these herself and tell, tell you guys which one she likes more. So we're gonna invite you in, babe. Why don't you come on up? Come on up. Woo! All right, so um, you can do this however you want. Here's a spoon. Crab stock's real good. Let's get some crispy bits. <laughs> I don't know. I love how spicy and like chewy that is. Yeah. It's like you can crush that. But I really love like a dark roux like you were saying. And like I like how this is brothy and you can like have pieces. Yeah. So I guess it like depends what you're in the mood for. Right. But like I'm a big gumbo gal. Woo! Gumbo gal! We make jerseys gumbo gal. Yeah. Gumbo it is. Gumbo right. it is. All right, well that brings us to three points, two points, making our winner the seafood Creole style gumbo. That's a wrap. Well, more like a stew. <laughs> All right, so I need two things from you in the comments. One, let me know below which dish reigns supreme in your head, right? Who is your champion, gumbo or jambalaya? Two, if you have any recommendations for future Battle of the Bites matchups, let us know. I have a handful of awesome ideas, but I love hearing from you guys, so get involved. Send your ballot in in the comments below. Let me know. Big, exciting announcement. My website is officially up, so all of my written recipes, which, yes, include the technique, are going to be posted over there. Link's gonna be in the description below, so go check that out. You can easily access all of them on my website. It'll also house other future things like merchandise, stickers. I have a bunch of free ebooks over there if that interests you. Just everything I'm never Adam, it's gonna be over there on the website. If you're new to the team, be sure to subscribe and I shall see you omnivores next time. Y'all take care now.